instead of rewriting all those matrices, since we're doing this in the calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them all a different letter name. So looking at number 51, we have a matrix on the left side. I'm going to call that A. Then we've got another matrix on the right side of the equals. That's B plus C times X. X is what we're solving for. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and put in matri uh, matrices A, B, and C. I'm going to go ahead and put those in there, so y'all do that as well, just to get you some practice. Uh, what are the dimensions of A? Two by three, two rows, three columns. Okay, <clears throat> another second. has changed as far as solving this. It's just we're going to let the calculator crunch all the numbers. So we need to start by subtracting matrix B. So we have A minus B. Now the order is very important here. Okay. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do is we are going to multiply by the inverse of the matrix that is being multiplied by the one we're trying to find. So we're going to multiply by the inverse of C. And again, that always comes first. So now that we have those matrices in our calculator, all we have to do is go to our matrix menu under names. And we need C first, C inverse, parentheses, and then we need A minus B. Close your parentheses, and that is the answer. That is the matrix X. Okay, matrix X is 6, negative 5, negative 8, 5, 1, and negative 7. With the exception of the inverse, your answers should always be whole numbers, okay? Every once in a while when you're doing one of these inverse problems, uh, you will get fractions in your matrices, but other than that, you should always get whole numbers. If you don't, then you need to go back and make sure that you didn't type something in incorrectly when you were putting your matrix in there, um, or you need to make sure that... Um, you did your operations in the correct order, okay? That can throw off your answer. Um, but otherwise, unless I'm just asking you to find an inverse, uh, you should not have any fractions in your matrices, except if it's an inverse, okay? If it's an inverse, you do. All right, so I want you to try to do number 50. systems of equations is because we can actually use our calculator to solve a system of equations uh, using matrices. Okay, we can use matrices to solve these systems of equations. Now, I think you'll have a pretty good handle on two by two, uh, two variables, two equations. But technically, you can use your calculator to do those too. But especially with the three variable ones. Now, I was very pleased that was probably the best I've ever had a group um, do on solving the three variable, uh, three equation without a calculator or anything. Um, Y'all did fairly well on that uh, as, a, as a group. But I want to show you that, you're, that you can do this using matrices, okay? Now the key to this is all your variables have to be on the left side, just like they did with elimination. Now number 60 here is set up perfectly for that, okay? Um, now I do encourage you to write out the matrix before you just start typing it into your calculator. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to have a 3 by 4 matrix. Notice we have three equations, we have three variables, and then we have a constant on the end. So that's where the three rows and the four columns come from. And what we're going to put in those rows and columns are the coefficients. Okay? So we're going to just take the negative 4, the negative 6, the negative 4, and the positive 6. You have to be very, very careful with your signs, though. Please, please, please do not miss those negatives um, and whatnot. Okay, so the second equation, we've got negative 4, negative 2. Z does not have a coefficient. What is it understood to be? 1. Very good. It is not 0. It is 1. And then 8 on the end. Now, this is something else you have to be careful with. That last equation it's missing the X. So we got to put a zero in the first spot because it doesn't have an X. Then Y is negative four, Z is negative five, and it's equal to negative two. Okay, so you're going to put that matrix into your calculator. And just overwrite matrix A there, change the dimensions three by four. Once you get it in there, go back to your home screen. Second mode. Once you've got that, we're going to go back under the matrix menu. We're going to go over to math, and we're going to scroll down until we find something called RREF. Okay, now there is one that just says REF. We need the one that says RREF. Okay, press enter, and then you want to put matrix A right after that. You want to put matrix A inside of its parentheses. Now, what that stands for is something called reduced row echelon form. Echelon was a mathematician. He did a lot of work with matrices and he came up with this whole process. Um, now you can do this by hand. It's quite tedious. It takes quite a bit of time. Um, but you, could, you can actually do it by hand. But the great thing is the calculator does it for you and it does it very, very quickly. Um, when you press enter, oops, I must have typed something. Oh, nope. I didn't type in anything wrong. It's supposed to look like that. What's supposed to happen, what is supposed to happen, is you're supposed to get right here in the 3x3 three three in the front, you're supposed to have a diagonal of 1s, and everything else is supposed to be 0. That's what we call an identity matrix. Um, and then the final column is our answers. If you end up with something like this, where you have, uh, you're missing a one on that diagonal right there, then this is a case where there is no unique solution. Okay, there is no unique solution. I'm just double checking because I forgot I didn't put those on here, but apparently I did. Um, yeah. Okay, this is an example of something that has no unique solution because we're supposed to have a row of ones on the diagonal. So there is no unique solution to this system of equations here, okay? But let me show you what it would look like if we were to get the correct solution. Um, or if we had a system that had a solution. Let me rephrase that, okay? What you would have here is you would have the ones right here on the diagonal. All the other numbers would be zeros, and your answer would be in the last column, x, y, and z. That would be your solution. Okay? 
So I want you to get some practice with typing this in, making sure you've got the details, finding the RREF, okay, looking for the row of diagonals, um, and everything else being zero, and then that last column is going to be your X, Y, and Z. So on your worksheet, I want you to look at 53 through 63 odd.